Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Welcome to this talk on reading the audiogram. This is a very important introductory lesson on how to read and interpret a hearing test. Anyone who suspects hearing loss gets a hearing test, and this is exactly the procedures I'm going to be describing here are exactly what will be done. Whether you're getting your hearing tested here, or in USA, or in Timbuktu, essentially the same procedures are done. It's called the hearing test. And the results are written down on what's called an audiogram. There's several different things that we look at when we do a hearing test. First of all, we look at the degree of the hearing loss. How much do we have? When you're looking at this audiogram, you'll see a big square here. And across the top are numbers written that represent frequency or pitch. The leftmost number, 125, is actually low C in the musical scale. The next octave higher is middle C, 250 hertz, or cycles. These numbers represent how many cycles per second, how many si si uh, bumps the sound wave has per second. Those are called cycles per second or hertz. H E R T Z, or capital H, small z, hurts. It really hurts. At any rate, 500 or 125, 250, high C would be 500 hertz. As we double the numbers, you go up one octave, you double the number, up an octave, double the number. So you can see we test hearing generally at seven different octaves. The numbers going down the side here represent decibels from 0 down to 120. 0, of course, being very soft, and 120 being like a screaming jet engine. Some people have super hyper hearing. They'll have minus 10 abilities, but we'll get to that. At any rate, normal hearing, mild, moderate, severe, profound. If you're hearing, if it never takes you more than 25 decibels, you see the line here? If it never takes you more than 25 decibels to just barely hear a sound, you're said to have hearing within the normal range. If it takes you some 25 to 40 decibels to just barely hear a tone, you're said to have a mild hearing loss. If it takes you between, say, 50 to 70, you've got a moderate hearing loss. 80 plus, a severe hearing loss. Profound hearing loss, greater than 90 decibels of hearing. So that, that are required for you to just barely hear. Now hearing testing is done under headphones, right and left, in order to separate the ears to test each ear independently. Now in general, red represents the right ear, blue represents the left. And this is true in almost every stereophonic piece of equipment. At any rate, the audiologist or hearing instrument practitioner will place headphones on your ear and the right will be marked red and the left will be marked blue. And your hearing levels will be measured at every frequency where they test how many decibels are required for you to just barely hear the tone at each one of these different frequencies. Now the second thing that's found on a hearing loss is the type of hearing loss. We want to know what kind of hearing loss. Is it a conductive hearing loss? Or is it a sensory neural loss? Because degree of hearing loss is just one part of the story. We also want to know, is the hearing loss due to outer ear pathology, middle ear pathology, or inner ear pathology? And that's what's called finding the type of hearing loss. So as on the previous slide, we talked about the degree or the quantity. Now we're looking at the type. Now again, the X's and O's. X represents the left ear. The O's represent the right ear. So on any audiogram in the world, that's the general terminology we use. This person here has a similar hearing loss in both ears. It took about 40 to 50 for the person to just barely hear all the different frequencies across the board for both ears. And so that person has what's called a moderate degree of hearing loss. And that's done under headphones. The X's, left ear under headphone. The O's, right ear under headphone. And again, you can see the degree now. And they call that air conduction. That's the term people use for testing under headphones. Because the sound is traveling 
from the headphone through the air in your outer ear canal, hitting your eardrum and going through your ear system. Air conduction. Now, once they've done a test by air conduction in both ears, we know the degree of loss. Now we need to tackle the second thing and find out the type of hearing loss. And here's where bone conduction comes in. Bone conduction is done by placing a small black plastic box on a headphone, or I should say on a headband, and the, blocks, the box is placed on the mastoid bone. If you put your finger behind your ear, you'll feel this round bone. That's exactly where that little box is placed. And that, now the tones are delivered through that little box to, through your skull. They're delivering the tone again. So they've taken off the headphones and now you're, you're presenting the tone through the skull. That's called bone conduction. And it's important to realize that when you're testing by bone conduction, you are bypassing the outer ear, you are bypassing the middle ear, and you're sending the tone straight through to the cochlea or the inner ear. Now look at this slide here. You can see that this person had a moderate hearing loss through air conduction, testing under headphones, but when he or she was tested with, by bone conduction, look at the little hatch marks. They're really good. They're, they're right around zero. This person is hearing like a baby through the bone. And so you can say to yourself, self, guess what? By bone conduction, the hearing is normal. By air conduction, the hearing, the hear, a moderate hearing loss is presented. That means the pathology must exist either in the outer ear or the middle ear, because when I bypass those, guess what? The hearing is normal. A conductive hearing loss means there's a blockage of the conduction of sound to the cochlea, where it's got to go. This is the kind of hearing loss that will be found in children with otitis media, middle ear infection. It'll also be found in people with otosclerosis. And it'll also be found in, with people that have a whole lot of wax in the outer ear. Anything that's blocking sound getting through to the cochlea, you will have air conduction levels that are different from bone conduction levels. And by the word level, we'll just call them thresholds. The, po the person's hearing sensitivity, his, his or her thresholds are around 40 to 50 for the left and right ear. The thresholds of air conduction, thresholds, thresholds. And now the thresholds, the hearing ability, by bone conduction is essentially normal. Let's move on to the most common hearing loss in the book sensory neural, because this is 95% of hearing loss, sensory neural. And look also at the shape, because that's the third thing when looking at hearing testing. We've looked at the degree, we've looked at the type, we also can look at the shape, or what's called the configuration. The prior, the, the previous slide showed you a flat hearing loss. It was essentially similar across for all frequencies. That was much like putting an earplug in your ear. That's what pathology of the middle ear or outer ear is. It acts like a plug in your ear. Well, look at sensory neural loss. The shape is like a hill. It, it slopes down. And not only that, let's go back to looking at the type. The X's and O's, the thresholds by headphone, left ear, right ear, thresholds, thresholds, they gradually get worse for the treble frequencies. The bass hearing is excellent, mid-frequency hearing is showing a mild hearing loss, high frequency hearing is showing a moderate degree of loss. So we'd say this person's hearing is normal to moderate in degree because of the slope. And the next thing to notice is the bone thresholds. Look how they follow the air thresholds. No longer are they sitting way up top. Uh-uh. You found the hearing loss to have a slope. There's the degree of loss, normal to mild to moderate. Take off the headphones, put on the bone conduction oscillator on that mastoid bone, and guess what? The hearing got no better. So that means no matter how you delivered that sound, there was a hearing loss, and it, it frees the middle ear and the outer ear of any culpability because they have no part in the play here. 
When I avoid the outer and avoid the middle ear and deliver the sound straight through the skull, the hearing levels get no better. This means the damage or the cause is the inner ear, the hair cells of the cochlea. There is no medical treatment for this. One can only wear hearing aids. This is often seen with presbycusis, hearing loss in the elderly. And this degree of hearing loss that I'm showing you is around the most common degree of presbycusis found. It happens in at least 30% of people over 65 and in at least 50% of people over 75. I hope you've enjoyed this little talk on reading the audiogram. Thanks for listening.